This is Good Morning Suncoast. We're here for you. It is 6 o'clock. Good morning. I'm Stephanie Roberts in for Rebecca Vargas. And I'm Don Brennan. John Scalzi will be joining us momentarily. But last night, the big news, the debate. Obviously, topping our news this morning, the fiery exchanges in that first presidential face-off last night. It took about five minutes for it to get a little squirrely. <laughs> Hillary Clinton, Donald Trump clashing on several fronts during the debate. And ABC's Stephanie Ramos is in New York, joining us now live from Hofstra University, where the debate took place last night. And in the end, let's say both sides got their shots in. Stephanie? This may have been the highest rated debate ever. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump disagreeing over race, jobs, terrorism, and temperament. The candidates, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, walking out on the debate stage, shaking hands and taking a fighting stance. Their first general election face-off turning contentious and personal quick. I have a feeling that by the end of this evening, I'm going to be blamed for everything that's ever happened. Why not? Why not? Yeah, why not? It was a spirited debate full of interruptions. Donald, I know you live in your own reality, but oh, yeah. that is not the facts. But you have but no plan. Educate. Oh, I do. Check Slamming each other on issues like climate change, Good trade to stop and frisk. Because the argument is that it is, it's a form of racial profiling. No, the argument is that we have to take the guns away from these people that have them and that are bad people that shouldn't have them. Stop and frisk was found to be unconstitutional and in part because it was ineffective. Trump continuing Hillary to blast Clinton on her stamina staff. and strength, but Clinton shutting down well, that line of attack. Well, as soon as he travels to 112 countries and negotiates a peace deal, a ceasefire, a release of dissidents, an opening of new uh, opportunities in nations around the world, or even spends 11 hours testifying in front of uh, a congressional committee. He can talk to me about stamina. This marked the first time both Clinton and Trump shared the same stage, side by side, as they try to prove to voters they're the best person to lead the country. You decided to stay home, and that's okay. I think Donald just criticized me for preparing for this debate. And yes, I did. And you know what else I prepared for? I prepared to be president, and I think that's a good thing. And this is just the beginning. The second presidential debate between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump is set for October 9th in St. Louis, Missouri. Stephanie Ramos, ABC News, Hempstead, New York. Back to you. Thank you, Stephanie. That was the spin will continue throughout the day today. Well, don't you know that's true. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I thought actually the moderator did a pretty good job of letting both sides, you know, shoot back and forth and. Uh, still keep it, uh, still keep it on time and it in line. It was appropriately snarky. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't think we thought anybody was going to necessarily get along the whole time, but I didn't no. think it went over the top. It's either fairly direction. civil. Yeah. Yeah, fairly, for, absolutely. For, for, I think some people expected a blood fest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it, 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 it had the potential early on, but uh, you know, within the first ten Toned minutes, down. it started nice, civilly, and then got ugly early uh, with Trump. But, but Trump was very full of bluster without saying facts, and Lester pin them down to make them say the facts. So it, it ended up being that he did all right, and then Hillary pumping her website about how you can find out if he's actually telling the truth live on my website. So go there now. That yeah. was kind of bizarre. <laughs> it was kind of, In this day and age, we're all yeah. pumping Instagram, Twitter, something right. like that. So yeah. while we certainly, I have to say, I noticed the three degrees this morning. Yeah, it's it's nice. three degrees nicer. cooler, and I'll take it. Yeah. Nicer. Oh, well, the dew points are lower, too, we're making it yeah. feel a little bit more comfortable. Uh, Becky Mayaka, 65 degrees. Oh, so, Becky, ooh. you're so lucky. She's <laughs> loving it. She's loving it. Old Mayaka, I should say. Uh, absolutely <laughs> loving it. And I think over the course of the next several days, that's kind of going to be the thing, slightly lower dew points. However, we have a shift in the winds as well. A westerly shift in the wind favors those morning showers. There's a few of them around. We'll have about a 10 to 20 percent chance of a morning shower near the coast, followed by more inland shower activity later in the day at about 30 percent coverage. Also, that west wind may blow a few of those red tide toxins a bit further inland. We'll be watching for that as daytime high temperatures benefit from a lot more sunshine over the next several days. We'll talk all about the forecast, including an active tropics in just a few. Thank you, John. Taking a look at Suncoast Roadways, everything has been moving along pretty good this morning, and that's still the case in Manatee County. The volume is picking up, which is normal for this time of the morning, which is 6.05. And the only real hot spots are 41 North, just south of State Road 70, and 41 South, just north of Cortez Road. As you move into Sarasota County, 75, 301, 41, all moving along without a hitch, and South County actually is 
free and clear this morning as well. And tapping our news here on the Sun Coast, a little girl is in serious condition after her mother's boyfriend allegedly fractured her skull. A warning, some of these pictures are very graphic. The Sarasota County Sheriff's deputies arrested Nicholas Ritter over the weekend after bringing that three-year-old girl to Sarasota Memorial Hospital. He told staff that she had fallen. Doctors found two skull fractures, a laceration on her chin, and internal bleeding. Ritter was arrested and later admitted to deputies that he had been alone with the toddler, but he would not say whether or not he abused her. Someone who knows Ritter had this reaction. I don't even know what an appropriate punishment would be, but I would say if he got 20 years, I'd say, all right, kind of okay with that. I have two small children of my own. It scared the daylights out of me that something like that could happen to, to a little girl with somebody that she trusted. Ritter is charged with aggravated child abuse. The little girl is breathing and moving on her own, but has not yet awakened. The FBI is now joining the investigation into evidence theft within the Bradenton Police Department. The FBI spokesman says the agency is assisting the department in their internal investigation <coughs> after the department requested their help early in the process. The investigation was brought to the public's attention during a mayoral debate when former Deputy Chief Warren Merriman claimed money. Guns and possibly drugs were stolen from the evidence room at the Bradenton PD. Chief Melanie Bevan says it is an active criminal investigation. In Palmetto, local business owners are fighting plans to open a new nightclub on 8th Avenue West. Ryan Bowles owns the property at 615 8th Avenue West. A new tenant wants to turn part of the property into a Spanish nightclub. City officials rejected Bowles' application for a conditional use permit. Nearby business owners say bars that have opened in the area have caused issues with garbage, weapons and drugs being left in the parking lot and gang graffiti painted on the buildings. Bowles says future performance cannot be based on the past. City planners also said a bar would cause further parking issues. It is the third time an attempt to open a bar in that space has been turned down. In the meantime, Palmetto City Commissioners have voted on a new budget for the 2016-17 fiscal year. During last night's meeting, commissioners unanimously approved the $26 million budget. The millage rate will remain the same at 5.9 this year. The biggest spending will be on the mayor and commissioner salaries, as well as $4.6 million for the police department. $2 million will go to the city stormwater fund and $1.5 million for the road and bridge fund. Residents living along Sarasota County beaches are once again dealing with the sights and smells of red tide and dead fish for the past few days. Business owners, however, aren't sure that it's having a major impact on their businesses. They say September is usually a slow month to begin with, and if you're going to have a place to go, it would probably be on the water. If you're only in town for a few days and you have to choose between sitting in your hotel room or coming out here, we can guarantee that coming out here is definitely the better choice. The fishing's actually picking up. Every day here, you know, our water's starting to cool off a little bit. The fishing's getting real good. State wildlife officials say despite the red tide and the fish kills, it is still safe to go onto the water. And as tourist season traffic begins again, all to our chagrin, the De Florida Department of Transportation says part of a traffic study between Sarasota and Manatee counties in the Barrier Islands will not begin until next year. FDOT says they're currently working on finding a consultant for the study and will not find one in time for this season. Now, while data collection will not begin until next season, once approved, this consultant will begin working on other parts of the study, including reviewing previous research. It's one of three traffic projects the Sarasota Manatee Metropolitan Planning Organization has approved for the 2017 year. They've also signed off on the DeSoto Bridge replacement and the River Road expansion. The field for the next superintendent of Sarasota County Schools has narrowed to three. Andrew Rinberg, a former assistant superintendent with Indian River County, says he is dropping out for personal reasons. The remaining three candidates all have experience in the state of Florida, including Todd Bowden, who is currently Sarasota County's director of career technical and adult education. The superintendent decision is expected on October 18th. Florida Surgeon General Celeste Phillip and other state, local, and national health officials will be in Sarasota today for a child hunger summit. All Faiths Food Bank is hosting the summit at the Sarasota Municipal Auditorium this morning. The theme this year is child hunger and its impact. Participants at the summit will go over how to raise awareness for child hunger and also the factors that contribute to it. We'll also talk about how the community can work to prevent it. The summit goes from 8 until noon and is open to the public. 
Speaking of summiting or plunging towards the earth, strapped to a parachute, well, that kind of thrill-seeking may be part of Venice's future. May not be for everybody, though, <laughs> but the city council will decide today whether or not to allow a skydiving business to operate out of Venice Municipal Airport. Some pilots are still worried that people may get run over. ABC 7's Christopher Brantley explains. The FAA said to the Venice City Council, allow the people to skydive. This after the FAA conducted a risk safety study. They identified uh, several mitigating measures that could be taken to um, make that risk low. But there is still a risk.